Greetings everyone, and welcome to this video. I am Alessandro, also known as Dark Ages Workshop on the internet. This is part 2 of a trilogy of videos aimed at nailing down the basics of the grimdark style in miniature painting. Of course, I don't consider this series as commandments set in stone, but rather advices to inspire you as an artist and modern maker or gamer. I suggest watching part 1, if you haven't yet, to have a more complete experience. However, this video by itself is self-contained, as I'm gonna discuss with you the tools of the trade, the products we're gonna be using, and their properties. Take notes, as you want to take precautions with some of these products. It's imperative that you make your workshop or painting station a safe place for your loved ones and yourself. Now, it's time to dive into it. If you at least dipped your toes in miniature painting before, you know what the traditional type of painting consists of. The type of painting recommended by the giants and sellers of the market and represented in the back of the boxes. They're there to sell you their products, selling you there are some colors that need to be applied as a base, and some other as layers or glazes or for a dry application. There is nothing wrong in following these suggestions if you enjoy the process. But personally, for me, abandoning this mentality is what tore my veil of Maya. And when I feel I really started to improve and embrace the true joy and passion of this hobby. Recently, Oils and enamels have become somewhat more common, both in traditional and grimdark painting styles, also thanks to great content creators on the internet, such as the eclectic painting guru Marco Frizzoni and the Grimdark Compendium by Tsekaskagoon Miniatures. I cannot stress enough how important this last channel was to me back at three years ago. The process I will show you will include the use of such products, but not because they're trendy. There's multiple reasons why we're gonna use them. They're very flexible products that can be used in more ways than you can imagine. Don't be scared or view these products as a deterrent just because they work differently from what you're used to. With safety precautions and knowledge, they will provide a wonderful and liberating painting experience. Regardless of your painting style and techniques, you should never get discouraged, as I can guarantee even professional painters make mistakes when they experiment. They just don't show their failures. You have to be brave and bold. Hopefully, after this series of videos, you will have the right mindset and the tools you need to create your own grimdark style and find your own personal vision. Oils and enamels, but also acrylics sprayed via an airbrush or spray cans can be harmful to you and your loved ones. Every type of paint in atomized form will damage your health in the long term. Be sure that, while handling these products, you are in a well-ventilated area. When handling airbrush or using oils and enamels for long painting sessions, use a mask or even better, a respirator with filters such as this one. Otherwise, you may experience bad headaches. You don't want to use these products in your kitchen or living room, as they may leave an unpleasant smell. Even if we are using odorless mineral spirit, the smell will still be present. Set your painting station possibly somewhere near a window and away from family and pets. Just use your common sense here. Now, we'll be covering a list of the actual products. Brushes can be of natural and synthetic hair. Synthetic ones will be great for oils, 
as they are somewhat aggressive and can damage natural hair easily. We're gonna need a variety of sizes, from double zero to three with a point, and also some flat ones. Always separate acrylic brushes from those you'll use with oils. Store them in a different place. I personally don't use expensive brushes. I work with a very irrational, almost bestial workflow, and I would be concerned to use expensive ones. Any brand will do, as long as they're not terribly cheap. I also have some old, beaten up brushes, and some stiff ones. They can always come in handy. Acrylics, as you know, are water-based paints. They can be used straight from the pot, mixed with water to be more transparent, or with an acrylic medium to have a different consistency. They also come in pre-made washes. When they dry, they will become one with the plastics. They have a small window of working time. They dry almost instantly, and then summer, they can also dry on your very brush while you're applying them. A way to prevent this would be to use a wet palette or some paint retarder. As long as you keep your paint wet, you can create blends on the model with water and make it workable for a little longer. Mistakes will have to be painted over or removed with isopropyl alcohol 99% and a Q-tip very gently. In some instances, isopropyl alcohol can also come in handy to purposely create effects on a layer that was painted in acrylics by removing the paint and leaving a stained effect. Inks and contrast paints are also of this category. I'm gonna make use of lots of contrast paints in fact in my videos. Sometimes using them as intended sometimes with some different purposes. I will use Citadel, AK Interactive 3rd Generation, Green Stuff World and Vallejo brands. We don't discuss here which brands are better, just use the brands you enjoy the most or are the most accessible to you. Oils are oil based and they mix with odorless thinner or white spirits or turpentine. I personally use Odorless Artist Thinner from an artist store, but you can buy white spirit from any brand. The difference is almost non-existent, with the difference that you can buy one liter for cheap compared to branded ones that come more expensive in smaller bottles. Oils can be used straight from the tube or thinned for many different applications. You can create your own washes that will last you a long time and they're especially good for washing terrain pieces. You have to make thinner and oil pigment from the tube until you have a slightly runny consistency with some transparency. The nice aspect of having an oil wash is because of the capillary effect the white spirit has and its surface tension. You will notice that acrylic washes and oil washes work very differently. The oil wash will automatically reach all crevices. I wouldn't say the oil wash is superior to the acrylic wash. They just have different uses. The one thing that makes a great difference though is how much paint is in your brush. Working with oils is very different from acrylics as they have a very long drying time and they can mix onto each other. This is not a positive or negative aspect, but rather something that you can take advantage of. They can be used for base colors, washes, pin washes, dry brushing, highlights, creating filters and tones, with the added effect that any mistake can be cancelled, even hours after your application. Simply use your brush or a Q-tip dipped in white spirit in the area you want. This will reactivate the pigments and be workable again, meaning that you can remove the color entirely from that area, or leave a slight staining of that color in such area, depending on the drying time. 
using an oil and then removing it to leave a stain effect on the layer beneath is a major technique we'll be using in future videos. Abtelum 502 oils are designed for miniature painting. They contain a smaller percentage of linseed oil, the medium that artists use when painting on canvas. Since you ideally want your miniatures ready in little time and we're not working with canvas, this brand is optimal. I also use Winsor & Newton, honestly they work just fine. If you want to speed up your process, just use a hair dryer at safe distance and in a circling motion on your miniature to make the thinner evaporate quickly. One minute of hair drying can do to lock that layer in place. Oils, when fully dry, have a nice satin finish. Enamels work similarly to oils, but the products we're gonna be using come in pre-made bottles. These products are used mostly in the dioramas department, and specifically for weathering effects on scale modeling. We're gonna use these because, unlike the majority of oils, they leave a very slight microscopic grainy effect, and in some cases a very dry, ultra matte, almost powdery finish. These effects contribute to create a more realistic set of finishes, which is perfect for the Grimdark universe, as in part 1, we state numerous times that you want to represent the hardships of the world and the decaying effects on your characters. Therefore, these products will sell a realistic effect much more easily. Just like oils, they can be thin with odorless white spirit or turpentine, removed with spirit and a q-tip, or smeared and smoothened with a dry q-tip. With these products, we're mostly going to do washes and filtering effects. AK Interactive or MIG are perfectly equivalent, and their drying times are vastly faster than oils. They can dry even in 30 minutes, opposed to oils that will take hours or a full day if not heated with a hair dryer. Now, the two questions that a lot of people ask me when I introduce them to oils and enamels. Question number one. If I use an oil wash after an acrylic base coat, will the white spirit melt my paint job? The answer is no, it won't melt your paint job. The one thing that can happen is that, because of the capillary properties of the white spirits, if you apply an acrylic layer first and it's not well applied or inconsistent or too weak, it might find a breach in your paint job and scrape it away from underneath. Also, if you applied washes or contrast paints as your base colors, you may accidentally scrape them off while using Q-tips on your miniature because they make for a very thin layer. But there is no such thing as melting the plastics or the acrylic layer. You can easily avoid this by applying a coat of varnish onto your miniature. I suggest using a matte or satin varnish, as they will blend all the colors together and also make their oil run smoother. Question number two. Can I use acrylics after oils? Assume that the layers are completely dry and you're not mixing them. Absolutely yes. The videos I'll be sharing with you in the future will contain many different recipes and characters painted in different ways to show you there is no such thing as a pre-established way to paint. The important thing to remember is to respect the drying times and don't mix the colors that work with different mediums. Remember the simple equation. Acrylics stand to water as oils or enamels stand to odorless white spirit. Don't mix these colors while they're still drying and nothing bad will happen to your paint job. Pigment powders are also an important tool at our disposal. They are the primordial version of anything that you have in your paint pots. Pigments are extremely versatile. You can mix them with water for a dry, powdery effect and make rust streaks and 
heavy corrosion. You can mix them with white spirit to create surface variations on flat areas. You can mix them with a gloss medium and water for a fresh mud effect. Or simply use them dry and straight from the pots. Vallejo, Green Stuff World and Abtalum Fiber 2 ones are all great pigment powders. I have a variety of them of different brands. Just use the one you can get more easily. I hope this extensive guide will put an end to your concerns and doubts regarding the use of different paints. For now, it's just words and theory, and all of this may sound overwhelming and complicated at first, but hopefully this new mentality will make you enjoy miniature painting in a different way, more liberating and creative without concerns of making mistakes, and if you're into it, with very speedy and satisfying results if you want to paint a large batch of miniatures for your war games. Next time, in part 3, I will be painting a miniature using some of the things I mentioned in this video. Covering everything will be impossible in one video. But more videos will come, in which I'll show different approaches. If you got any doubts, feel free to leave a comment. Also, I'd be glad if you can leave a like and subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to receive future updates. If you can afford and if you learned something useful from this video, I'll leave my Ko-Fi link in the description open for donations that will help me being always more consistent and present on the channel. Stay safe and see you soon with part 3, Initiates.